For the past few days, I was getting requests on my channel uh, to do videos for this plane, the VC-12. So uh, uh, today I've decided to make a series of videos in which I will tell you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state, how to fly it on autopilot and how to perform an ILS approach and landing. Before this, I've uploaded a video in which I've taken you through all the starter procedures and how to configure the FMS. Now this video is about the autopilot. So um, I'm doing this sh a short flight from Lahore to Istanbul today. FMS is configured. I'm holding short of runway 18 lift and uh, yeah, preparing the plane for the takeoff. So uh, before the takeoff, let's uh, go through the checklist. If you go over here on the screen, you will see this uh, before takeoff checklist. Uh, so just make sure you have uh, the flaps set to position 1 or 15 degrees for the takeoff. And uh, then you can do the flight control test. That's it. And uh, let's do this. And landing light is on. Exactly. And the strobe is also on. That's it. So the checklist is now complete. Now for this flight, uh, the cruising altitude is 20,000. As you can see, it's mentioned over here. If you go to this option, altitude and speed, you will see the cruise cruising altitude is flight level 200. So let's adjust the altitude over here. If you look at this knob, the smaller one and the bigger one, you can adjust the altitude. The bigger one changes the altitude in thousands and the smaller one in hundreds. That's it. So I will set it to 20,000. Now it's 20,000. Great. Now this uh, panel is actually for the autopilot. You can turn on the autopilot from here. Uh, just make sure that the flight director is also on. Yeah, when uh, you will turn on the flight director, you will see a magenta arrow over here. Like this. Now on this screen, uh, this part is the FMA or the flight mode enunciator. It will tell you what uh, mode the plane is in right now for the autopilot. Right now, if after the takeoff, if I activate autopilot, it will uh, manage the roll of the plane. Uh, it will not let the plane turn left or right. It will just you know, level it off. And plus, whatever the pitch of the plane will be at that time when I will activate the autopilot, it will hold that pitch and keep on climbing to this altitude. So uh, I don't want to control the roll of the plane. I rather want to make sure that the plane follows the navigation which is over here the gps navigation so for this uh, turn on this option nav and now you will see nav is armed so another thing that you have to do uh, is this that just make sure that this is actually the hsi horizon situation indicator and uh, you can uh, select the type of uh, navigation that you want to carry out so right now you can see FMS is appearing. So it means uh, the plane will actually follow this GPS flight plan. But if I press this nav select, you will see it's localizer one. Now it will follow any uh, ground based navigation device, which you have actually, uh, which you are actually tuned into uh, by using this uh, frequency. So, or maybe the localizer two, VOR or the ILS, it's there. So just make sure it's not localizer one or two, it's FMS. Now the plane will actually follow this GPS flight plan. Now this is the CGI, which is the course deflection indicator. And this will tell you whether the plane is following the course or not and how much you are deflected from the course. This is actually the deflection needle. So right now you have to go left. So once you're on the runway, it will be pointing in this direction. That's it. Now press uh, comma to make sure you get uh, the right altimeter readings. Um, for this flight, I've actually changed the, the weather. It's actually very foggy in Lahore uh, nowadays. And even it was raining a lot in, uh, uh, in England. So that's why I had to change the weather. So this is the reason I'm not uh, getting the correct readings for the altimeter, but it will be adjusted, but just press comma and that's it. So everything is good now. I can release uh, the parking brakes and uh, I can take this plane to the runway. These are the speeds for the takeoff. 
the speed at which I will be taking off is 82 knots. So let's uh, give full throttle. Take this plane up in the air. So 82 knots, I can rotate. Lift this plane up in the air. As now there is a positive rate of climb, I can track the gears. That's it. And now I can also track the flaps. Now you can see the flaps are position, uh, moving to position zero. Now for the climb, I will use flight level change and I will activate autopilot. Now throughout this flight, I will tell you uh, what, what is the difference between, between the flight level change, the vertical speed. So, and uh, this plane also has this feature auto throttle. I can activate the auto throttle as well. Now you can see this uh, IDT, the temperature of the engine is getting higher. Soon I will get alert and I got the alert. So let's uh, reduce the thrust lever. As now the auto throttle is active, so it should adjust automatically. Yeah, you can see the thrust is getting adjusted as the auto throttle is active. Uh, no, it's not. So I can just deactivate auto throttle. I can reduce the thrust and you can see auto throttle is now deactivated. Now I am actually controlling the thrust myself. Uh, but now you can see even if I am reducing the thrust, um, the speed is constant at 140 as uh, per this uh, flight management system. But uh, the vertical speed is getting compromised. Even if I further reduce the speed, you will see the vertical speed will reduce. Because in this mode, when I am flying in the flight level change mode, the priority is the speed. And vertical speed is no longer the priority. So if I want to have a higher climb rate, I have to increase the thrust. And now you can see, as more thrust is there, that's why the climb rate is high but the speed is still at 140 because this is the optimum speed at which the plane can reach up to 20,000 in the shortest of the distance. Now then there is another mode, vertical speed. So if I move uh, to vertical speed, you will see now the vertical speed is set to 2,600 feet. I can adjust it. I can set it to 3,500. Now in this mode, uh, the vertical speed is the priority. And this speed is no longer the priority. As you can see, I have a very high climb of rate, rate of climb. So that's why you know you can see the speed is getting compromised. So now I can adjust the vertical speed in such a way that the speed remains at 140. So this is a bit tricky. So only use the vertical speed if you want to have a very high uh, vertical climb or descent during the flight. But it's always advisable to use the flight level change, the plane will automatically adjust it. But since uh, the thrust is in my control, so that's why I can just like change the vertical speed as I want. But if you want uh, the autopilot to do this, we have this option of auto throttle, just activate this auto throttle. And now the autopilot will actually adjust the thrust le lever in such a way that the speed remains at 140 and you have uh, the best climb rate so that you can just reach up to this point, which is the top of climb. Uh, now you have this also control over here. I'll just show it to you. This is FMS and manual. So right now, whatever the speeds are given over here in the FMS, the plane is actually following that. But if I move it to manual, now the thrust lever will be controlled by the autopilot, but I can adjust the speed. So let's say if I want to climb at 120 knots, so now I'm adjusting the speed, as you can see, the speed is over here. And now the plane will keep on climbing at this speed.
and the vertical speed will keep on getting adjusted. And if I want to climb at 150 knots, I can change the speed, 150. You can see the plane is leveling off. And now the speed will be at 150. And then once the plane is there, then the vertical speed will also increase. But it will get adjusted so that the speed is not compromised because in the flight level change mode and uh, in this auto throttle mode, when the speed is manually selected, the priority is the speed. Vertical speed is no longer the priority. Uh, I also forgot that we have crossed the transition altitude, so we have to change the barometer pressure to the standard. It will be changed on both of the sides for both of the PF PFDs. And um, that's it. The soon the plane will be at uh, this altitude, which is the top of climb. Now, there are a few things I also want uh, to show you. Uh, right now, the plane is uh, flying in this uh, nav mode. It is following this uh, flight plan. But if you want to fly in the heading mode, then you have to switch to the heading mode. Now, you can see instead of nav, heading is appearing over here. And I can go back to the nav mode. The plane will again start to follow this flight path. So the colors changed. Um, if you're flying in the heading mode, it goes green. And if you're flying in the uh, nav mode, it's magenta. So anything uh, that is an input from uh, the flight management system or the FMS, it appears in magenta color. As you, uh, now you can see the speed is also set by the autopilot, uh, by me as well. So now I can um, adjust the speed to FMS and uh, the speed will be automatically adjusted to 140. And now I will uh, switch uh, to the heading mode in order to show you how you can fly in the heading mode. Now this is the heading bug. If you bring your cursor over here on this knob and you press it, the heading bug will be centered. Now you can fly in the heading mode. And right now you can see uh, the CDI is no longer in the magenta color, it's appearing in white color. So it means the plane has stopped following. The navigation now, it's the heading which is active. Now whatever the input will be given by this heading bug, the plane will follow that. So let's say if I move this knob and if I turn towards left, the plane will go left. And if I move it towards right, the plane will go towards right. Now you can see heading is 390. And at any point, if I want to uh, go back to the nav mode, I can press it and the plane will start to go back to this mode. Now, if you look at the FMA, it has changed from heading to nav. Now as the plane is leveling off at 20,000 feet, so that's why the speed is going up to 200 knots, which you can see over here. And flight level 200, speed is 200 knots. Again, uh, you can just uh, take it to the manual. You can reduce reduce it or increase it. It's totally up to you. But let's uh, keep it like this. Now, uh, I'm going to fly in the heading mode and I'm going to have a higher deflection because uh, within a certain threshold, if you activate the nav again, the plane starts to follow this uh, flight path. But... Uh, after a certain threshold, it will stop following this flight path even if you activate navi navigation mode. So now I will tell you a technique that if you have a big diversion from this uh, flight path, how you go back. Now you can zoom in by bringing your cursor over here and moving up and down the mouse. You will uh, keep on getting this error compare fuel quantity, you can just ignore it. It's uh, kind of a bug. That's it. Now, uh, let's uh, try going back to this uh, nav mode. Now you can see heading is active. The plane is following this heading. And this CDI is showing you that your um, uh, flight path or your course is towards the right side and you have a deflection. So if I press nav, now you will see nav is armed, but still the plane is not going back to the nav mode because now we have a huge deflection and we're flying in the heading mode. In order to uh, follow this flight plan, you have to actually change this heading to this uh, side in such a way that you will intercept this flight plan. So I'm not setting the heading over here as per the flight plan, slightly towards the right side so that I'm able to intercept this line. So as soon as this plane will intercept this line, it will go back 
to the nav mode. Now the plane is uh, near this uh, flight plan and uh, soon it will go back to this nav mode instead of the heading. And that's it. Now the plane will start to follow the flight plan. So, these were the modes I just wanted to uh, show you in this autopilot. Then there are many other things that you can do, but these are the basic controls for the autopilot uh, so that you can just uh, carry out a successful uh, flight with this plane. So, I also had to go through this checklist <laughs> after takeoff so everything is good now landing gear is up uh, your damper is on actually you will see why are you appearing over here this, so this is your damper so this is active so you know it's set flaps up landing and taxi lights off we had to turn off these lights so that's it and wing light will but the nav and the beacon and the strobe will be active throughout this flight that's it and uh, checklist is complete and now before landing and uh, you have uh, certain things to check so hopefully this was a useful video for you and now you will be able to fly this uh, plane yourself on autopilot as well and manually if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add uh, anything to this video the comment section is there for you thank you very much for staying with me have a nice day hope to see you soon